In this video we'll be looking at question 1 from problem set 8 and we're looking at part C of this question. I ask you to evaluate the variability of the model by stating and discussing the adjusted coefficient of determination and the standard error of the estimate. So when we look at this output we see we've got our model summary provided and we look at the adjusted R squared in a multiple regression model and that value on the table is 67.1 percent. So remember R squared goes from 0 to 100 percent. The closer it is to 100 the more variability of the dependent variable is being explained by the variability of the independent variables. So we have 67.1 percent of the variability of our dependent variable y is explained by the variability of all of the variability of the independent variables. So by the variability of the independent variables and I'll just call those the xi. So by the variability of all these independent variables, 67.1 percent of the variability of our dependent variable is explained by the variability of all those variables. So this is a fairly decent amount of variability of the de dependent variable explained and as such it does a fairly good job in being able to explain the behavior of y. So that's the amount of variability explained by the model. Then we want to look at the amount of variable variability that's unexplained. So this is the standard error of the estimate. Now the standard error of the estimate, the value in this model is 11.596 and this is in the same units as our dependent variable. So it's telling us that there is some fluctuation around the rec regression line. So this is like the variability around the regression line and that's plus or minus 11.6 points. But we have a better way to evaluate how much fluctuation there is. So if you remember there's this coefficient called this, this evaluation of variability of a data set that's called the coefficient of variation. And we want to look at that for the regression model. So for the regression model and that is a simple formula coefficient and we give it the subscript regression and that we take the variability around the regression line so the standard error of the estimate that's what it's called in a regression model we divide that by the average value of our y variable. So we've got 11.5596 for that the standard error of the estimate and then we need the average value of our dependent variable y and that's given here that's our average value for y. So that average value, so the average number of points scored by the 199 players in our sample data set was 24.73. Now when we look at this relationship here we see that this standard of the estimate is almost 50 percent um, the size of the, sta the value, that's the average value of our points earned for the player. This is an en enormous value of standard deviation for our regression model or the standard error of the estimate. And the guideline in any data set or in a regression model is if this is greater than 10 percent, so if this ratio, and because this value is nearly 50 percent of 24, um, then we would say that if it's greater than 10 percent then we would say that there is a lot of variability in this model that's unexplained and what happens when that occurs so since this ratio is definitely greater than 10 percent then we can say that the prediction intervals if we use this model for prediction so we can say that since this value is greater than 10 percent so since the coefficient of regression is greater than 10 percent so this ratio is much greater than 10 percent. It's close to 50 percent. So since this coefficient of regression is greater than 10 percent, any prediction intervals, so our prediction intervals 
that we could calculate for a particular player. So if we wanted to use this model to predict the points earned by a player in the 2007-8 season based on these factors, we would come up with a point estimate and then we could calculate a prediction interval. And since our coefficient of regression is greater than 10%, this is telling us our prediction intervals will be quite wide. So it's telling us this model is not very good for prediction purposes. So this model would not be useful for prediction purposes. So even though there's a fairly large amount of variability of why explained, if we, so that's one reason we do a regression is we want to look at what kind of factors might help explain the variability of why. So we, we found that, that we saw that there was five significant factors in this, in this model. But if we wanted to use, so the other use for regression models perhaps might be for prediction. So if we wanted to actually use this for prediction, this coefficient of variation for the regression model, which we calculate using the standard error of the estimate, that's telling us that this model, it would not produce useful prediction intervals because our intervals would be very wide. So that's how we would look at the variability. We look at the explained variability and the unexplained variability. The explained variability tells us how much the factors, how well the factors have, have helped explain the variability of our dependent variable. The standard error, the estimate, tells us the unexplained variability, which then leads to very wide prediction intervals if it's, it's too large. So in the next video, we'll look at the assumptions that we need to assess in order to utilize any regression model, and that'll be part D of this question.